Have you ever had your dreams crushed because of choices you made? Um, because of some decisions I made in my youth, um, I, for years I walked around with a crazy story locked inside of me. Um, from time to time, I would mention bits and pieces of this story to people, and every single time the response was, you need to write a book. Now, I've never written anything in my life before, so I would always dismiss it. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing, so I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, you see, I suffer from the fear of never having done it before, and that really freaks me out. Um, I'm also a procrastinating perfectionist, so I won't raise your hands if any of you fall into this category. Okay, so you know that that means uh, that it's a recipe for stagnation, so just sit on it and do nothing. So no matter how much I dismissed it, I, c I couldn't help it. This story kept surfacing. It kept popping up in conversations. Um, as a child, I had a dream. It was my dream to be a soldier. It's what I wanted to do my whole life. Kind of a cross between uh, fellow launchers Bradley Gann and Combat Clark, you know, those two super troopers. Um, I wanted to serve my country and retire like uh, Stephen Tesler did from the Navy or my father did from the Air Force. After high school, I joined the Army and I headed, I headed off to start a career um, that I could be proud of. I, I just wanted to be a soldier so bad. Two years later, I find myself sitting in a jail cell facing 38 years in prison. And you're all probably wondering what went wrong and how I got there. You'll have to read that in uh, my book. <laughs> uh, Dishonor, one soldier's journey from desertion to redemption, which releases on August 30th. <laughs> but I'll give you a brief rundown. I'll give you a little bit of insight. Uh, in a moment of sheer stupidity, I started taking drugs. I ran away from the Army for six months. I sold drugs to stay alive. Eventually, I was captured. After a court-martial, stripping of my rank and pay, a dishonorable discharge, and a five-year prison sentence, I had nothing left. Up to this point in my life, I sought out my identity in a relationship with a girl and a career in a camouflage uniform. These are things that would ultimately fail me and that I couldn't live up to. I lost my focus and I lost my faith. So I can give you some action steps that are pretty easy to handle. One, don't do drugs. <laughs> Two, repeat number one. <laughs> um, hopefully that doesn't apply to any of you guys, um, but many of us do have something inside that cripples us. It may not be drugs, prison bars, or a felony conviction. Maybe it's a voice inside saying, you are not good enough. You will never make it. No one wants to buy your stuff. No one wants to hear your voice or listen to your message. These are the voices of doubt and fear which we know do not come from God. What if you knew that your creator was crazy about you, that in his eyes you are perfect, and through him you are more than perfectly capable? The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Once I realized this truth and that God was behind me, I knew it was time to launch. My story is about redemption through grace and forgiveness, and I knew that if I shared it, that there were people that would be helped if they heard it, broken, messed up people like me that needed to hear that God forgave them 2,000 years ago, no matter what. So how did I get from never having written anything in my life before to having a book published? I'll share what worked for me. If I could sum it up in one word, it's community. I joined an internet cult, I mean a community, um, <laughs> and told a bunch of strangers, I really have a, a crazy story to tell and I wanna write a book. And somebody said, you need a blog, because if you start a blog, um, you'll develop this story, and then a core group of people will support you, stand behind you, and help you launch your book. So I started a blog and called it DilemmaMike.com, which you can go to to find out all the information. Um, then I was like, now what the heck do I do with this blog? Um, again, I asked for help, and tons of people in this community told me what to do and how to do it. And if they hadn't, I would just have a website with nothing on it. Uh, more people reached out after I started writing because I needed serious help with my writing. Uh, Jim Woods, who's in the audience, uh, helped, he offered some tips and advice. Judy McKee uh, took my posts each week before they went live and taught me how to um, dig deeper. And then Ron A offered to edit my book. They helped me share my story in a more understandable way. So even if you think you have all the experience in the world or no experience at all, you can always learn something new or be inspired by someone else. It's important to have great content. In Jared Murr's speaking course, he says, content is king. And I don't consider myself a great writer, however, I have been told I have a compelling story. And no, you don't have to go to prison to have a compelling story. 
Share what you know about, the thing that's important to you, the one thing that you can't stop talking about. You will be surprised at how many people are just like you and want to engage with you. There are also those who aren't aware that they need to hear your message because they have, you haven't shared it yet. It's also important to be consistent. So with a minimum of once a week, you need to pick a day and post on that day if you're doing a blog. Um, your fans and followers will expect it. I picked Tuesday because it worked for my schedule, and it, I remember people saying, it's David Mike Tuesday, I can't wait. I was like, me either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this will be challenging, and it doesn't have to be perfect, because you can always edit and update after you post. Um, be so consistent that if you do miss a day, people start contacting you to make sure that you're okay, and that's happened to me because I, I took a, a vacation, and people are like, where are you at? It's Tuesday. Um, it's important to stay engaged, and a great way to do this is through social media. If you don't know how to use it, just ask a 13-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's overwhelming, just pick one platform. I got so excited for other people's success, so I commented, shared, liked, and retweeted. And you guys have all been subject to it, I'm sure. Um, people always want to reciprocate, and so my audience grew over time. And as a result, um, on my first day of launching my Facebook group for my book, about 400 people showed up, and it's now up to 600. <laughs> so in conclusion, you can't do it alone. And this is a common theme. You guys all know this. Um, you can, but it'll take longer. So uh, John Acuff said that fear, fierce community, as well as many other speakers here, ask for help from someone that has done it before, show up, put your stuff out there, and share it. When you're finally comfortable with what you're doing, help someone else. If it weren't for people willing to share time, effort, knowledge, and advice, I would not have made it this far. It's all about community. And thankfully, if you're here, you're on the best one in the internet. Um, lastly, if God hadn't redeemed our mess, none of us would have a message. Thank you.